Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know why people want it to be Alaska. It's cold in here. Is it just me? Hey. I know we wanted summer to end, but Jesus. Grab your Bibles as fast as you can. We are going to read Matthew chapter 11, verse 25 to 30. If you are there, shall glory to God. Glory to God. At the time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent and has revealed them unto the babes. Wow, let's read that again, please. At that time, Jesus answered and said, Put your right hand on your head. Say, Father, give me the spirit of revelation. Father, give me the spirit of revelation. You may be seated in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I want you to, to, to capture something, and I pray that this will help you in your walk with God as you walk through this life and as you're on your way to heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to understand something that there are things that God has hidden and God has hidden them for a reason. And God decides who to reveal these things to. And God does not, you don't receive revelation by studying the word of God. No, that will not give you revelation. You don't receive the knowledge of the spirit because you fasted and prayed. It does not work like that. You don't receive mysteries of the Spirit because you are filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm sorry, it doesn't work like that. If it was so, then you will not have a need for a pastor or an evangelist or, or, or a teacher or an apostle or, or a prophet. There is a reason why God has made certain things to be a certain way because there are certain mysteries that are given to certain people for the benefit of others. And the reason why God does that is because our capacity in capturing spiritual things is not the same. I feel like I'm talking to myself so far. So there are things that Jesus, when he was speaking to the Pharisees and and to the Sadducees and to, the, uh, to all manner of people in his day. At some point he stopped and he began to pray. And he says, Father, I thank you that you have hidden these things. So there are things that God has hidden. So it doesn't matter how much you fast and pray. The God who gives it has hidden it. You have no way of receiving it because God has hidden it. Are you capturing what I'm saying? Yes. Verse 26, look at this. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. So just like God in the beginning, he created, let there be this, and he said it was good. God also, within that span, he said also, this one, it is good for me to hide it. If you read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it says, uh, from verse 6, it says, you know how be it, we speak wisdom to those who are mature, not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that is coming to nothing, but we speak the wisdom of God hidden from the beginning. So there is wisdom, knowledge of God that is hidden from the foundations of the earth that God has preserved for a certain people. I believe that people is you. Amen. Amen. I see. I see. Maybe this is for overflow, those who are... Your clapping says it's for somebody else. So there are certain things that God has hidden for a certain dispensation. 
for a certain people because he understands that and God knowing his creation, he knows there are certain things that certain individuals cannot digest at a certain time. If it is given to them, instead of bringing forth good things, it might end up creating issues. An example is we are living in a prophetic age because whenever the coming of the Lord is, no matter what God wants to do on the earth, whether it is his appearance, whether it is his judgment to a certain people or, or what God wants to do, God cannot do it until or unless he reveals it to a prophet. So if Jesus is coming indeed, then the prophetic must increase because the prophetic always announces... Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me find somebody to talk to. The prophetic must always increase. Because it is the announcer. It is the trumpet of the Lord. The Bible says that Jesus will descend with the shout of an archangel. Why does it mean, but it says a trumpet. Is it a trumpet or is it a shout? No, it is a voice. Amen. It is a voice that will declare, here comes the king. Amen. So without the prophetic, we are off. I, I wish I was speaking to somebody. Now, many times people will tell you, you don't need, the, you don't need anybody to tell you about God. Find God for yourself. How contradictory is that to the very Bible they are, lead, they are reading? Jesus our Lord stands and says when he ascended the Bible says it like this when he ascended he gave gifts to men some apostles some prophets some teachers some evangelists some pastors to the perfecting of the body so anyone who tells you read the Bible and find God for yourself he's telling you don't be perfected according to God's standard amen that's good you see now it is a thing whereby if I don't understand the realm that you're walking in with God, it means you are off. It means there is a demonic agenda behind you. It means you are a deceiver. It means you have come to steal from the people of God. You have come to destroy simply because somebody is functioning where you're not. But Jesus said this, Satan cannot cast out Satan. So why is the church fighting people who are casting out demons? Why is the church fighting people who can prophesy to somebody and tell them, listen, you need to repent because your time is short, you're about to die. If you don't fix it, you're going to die. They will say, that is not true, it is not written. I guess they have never read the book of Kings where a prophet stood before the king and said, listen, I was in God's presence. I watched God deciding to kill you. And I am telling you right now, if you go to war, you will die because yeah. God wants you to die. And the man said, no, that is not true. Lock him up until I come back. And he stood and he said, if I be a prophet, you will not come back from this war. Listen to me. There is a realm in the prophetic. You will look at somebody and you know when they are going to depart. Amen. But you see, the church doesn't want you to benefit. There was a man that feared God, loved God, gave his life to God. And the prophet Isaiah, the Lord spoke to him, he said, go and tell him to get his house in order, he's about to die. Mm -hmm. And on. the prophet went and says, hey, sir, the Lord says, you're going to die from this sickness, get your house in order. How did that man know? There is a hot spot. Come on, come on, come on. There is a network of the Spirit. Yeah. I feel like, let me talk to people who are ready to receive a higher dimension. Era Masuta. Rebende Liga Azute Periatova. Iria Masota Periatosh. There is a realm. Listen to me, children of God. There is a dimension. Ah, please sit for two seconds. There is a dimension where the network of God. You see, human beings are like an antenna. You are created with the ability to receive from God. 
Now the problem is in our time we have made receiving from God only healing, money, breakthrough. No. Man shall not live by what? Bread alone. But by every word that proceeds from God. So man is supposed to live on a word that is coming from the lips of God that can enter into man's spirit and reveal to man his purpose, his way. Amen. Hallelujah. He can deliver healing to the man. Yes. Transformation to the man. Yes. Redemption to the man. No wonder the word says that he sent his word. Come on. And healed them. Somebody is not getting healed. Because the word is entering your ears but is not entering your spirit. Woo. Let so me good. go to overflow. I think you're teaching good, prophet. I, I feel like the overflow is receiving this better. Listen to me. The church is on this side. I don't know what this. Amen. This people, let Amen. me talk to the people on this side. Are you listening to me? Yes. He sent his word. He did not send a pastor. He did not send a bishop. He sent his word. So meaning if you come to a man and a woman of God, their duty is to send the word. Amen, amen, amen. Now the issue is, you lost the network. You're like a cell phone in a dead zone. I don't know if somebody can hear me. You are like a cell phone in a dead zone. That when you are in that area, you are getting text messages back to back. The word is coming, but it's not coming in. But the moment you receive yes. the hotspot yes. by entering into Revelation Church, come on, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Your phones, your. Sp Ah, somebody shout fire. Fire! <laughs> sit, sit for two seconds. Sit. Sit, 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 sit. For two seconds. Somebody shout God's hotspot. God's hotspot. So, so there is a way this thing works. God will be talking. Let me tell you the truth. A prophet's duty was because God realized you don't listen. So his duty is to announce to you a message that already came to you. But you have no network to receive it. Something is wrong with your service provider. You have T-Mobile, NTNT, you have Verizon. But you don't have Heaven's Network. Come on. Service from above. Yes. That service works even if you're in the shadow of death. Amen. You'll be going through a hard time. Amen. But you can still receive the word. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Sit, sit for two seconds. Do you know why you give up? You give up and you say, Lord, have you forsaken me? Lord, have you forgotten me? Father, why are you not hearing me? Father, what's going on? Oh Lord, can't you see the doctor said I would die? Father, can't you see they said that I would not make it? Father, can't you see what they said about my child? Oh Lord, where are you? God is sending messages. But because you're used to cell towers, you see, some of you are used to cell towers. Oh man, there's no cell tower here. My, my phone is kind of... But when people fly on an aeroplane, they go so high that the cell towers are no longer useful. But somebody on a plane will be texting you. Come on. How are they doing this? There is a satellite that is beaming from... 
Come on. Hallelujah. How much more for somebody that is under an open heaven? Yes. yes. I prophesy to somebody. Yes. Heaven is being opened for you. Hallelujah. Yes. I receive. You are receiving God's hotspot. I receive. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, sit for two seconds. Uh, we are getting somewhere. Yes. We are getting somewhere. We are getting somewhere. Amen. Touch your neighbor, say we are getting somewhere. We are getting somewhere. Shake your neighbor, say neighbor. Neighbor. We are getting somewhere. We are getting somewhere. Touch another neighbor, say neighbor. Neighbor. We are going somewhere. We are going somewhere. Hallelujah. So, so now the issue is this. Others are not understanding. They can't understand. Why, 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 why is, why is this man hearing God? And I have the Holy Spirit, but I can only perceive from God using the Bible. Well, he's using the Bible too, but how is it that he can stand before somebody and look at him and begin to know things about that person? Is he acting? Do they have actors? No, it must be a familiar spirit. Do you know why they believe in the devil so much? The Bible says Satan is the God of what? No, 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 not the God of lies. The God of this world. They are so used to an earthly network. That they tell them we, are, we cover the whole country. But you realize just in your bathroom there is no service. Come on. This is good. Fastest internet, fastest this, fastest. But you realize that. Bathroom, no service. Bedroom, sometimes you have to do this. You see, the Lord Jesus said something. He said something very beautiful. He stood before the Pharisees and they were like, Ah, you, who do you think you are? You're making yourself this, you're making yourself that. And Jesus looked at them and said, You know, before Abraham, I am. They said, Blasphemy! <laughs> Blasphemy! <laughs> He is blaspheming, you young man. Small, skinny African, what are you saying? <laughs> Jesus looked and said, what do you mean? He said, don't you know your father Abraham was glad to see my day? They said, this, this, this boy wants to be stoned today. He said, don't you know Abraham, your father, was glad to see my day? Notice, the network of Abraham and your network is no different. But Abraham was able to receive the promise. Amen, amen. His wife who is next to him yes. took years yes. to receive it. That hey guy could receive it faster than her. Wow. Let's close the Bible. Let's say prayers. This is good. Sarah was, was in the church. Sarah was with Abraham the prophet. 24-7. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. When God came to do it, no network. God came to do it. Zero network. That she started saying, okay, maybe God meant Haggai can, you know, can bear that child for me. Abraham came to Haggai and said, Haggai, the Lord said, as my wife has already told you, Haggai said, I receive it. Before you knew it, Ishmael was born. 
Let me talk to somebody that is ready to hear. See? Let me talk to somebody that is ready to. We're ready, we're ready, we're ready. We're ready, Prophet. Maybe Overflow is ready to receive this. Think about it. Hey, guy is able to tap into network immediately. No questions asked, nothing. Immediately, bam, boom, ba, ba, boom, bang, bang, bang. Ishmael is born. Sarah is still confused. Until when Ishmael is a grown, notice this, look at how deep this is. Ishmael is born. Sarah and uh, Haggai begin arguing. <laughs> Haggai takes Ishmael and runs away. She doesn't even know where she's going. They get thirsty. The child is dying of thirst and hunger. She prays God is not hearing her. She prays God is not hearing her. Why? She left the network. Mm. Wow. So good. That's so good. Shh, wait, 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 wait. She left the network. So she's, she's praying God. God is not hearing. Ishmael, she laid Ishmael to die. And she turned on the other side. And Ishmael cried to God from within his spirit. Immediately heaven was open and the angel of the Lord answered. Say, hey, what are you doing in the wilderness? It means that in God's service, she had disappeared. No cell phone service. They could see the boy, but they could not see her. So when she called, heaven could not respond because they can't hear her. But the boy calls because the boy is the seed of the prophet. Come on. The network is... Come on. Whee! The network... Re <laughs> the angel says, hey, hey guy, what are you doing here? The angel caused water to come from the ground and he says, listen, what are you doing here? Oh, my master, he said, listen, you need to get back there and repent to your master. Notice, hey guys, network was not Abraham, was Sarah. Wow. <laughs> teaching. But the one with the network could not receive. Come on, come on, come on. Let me find somebody that will catch. I am here to help you. That your hot spot will turn on. Amen. 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 Sit, sit for two seconds. Now watch this. Let me show you. Verse 27. We are going somewhere. We are going somewhere. Now listen to what Jesus our Lord is saying. All things are delivered unto me of my father. Jesus was not working with a bank account. He was not working with a bag of healing. It, all these were inside of him. So Jesus is saying, all these things have been delivered unto me. Of my father. Meaning what is in me, what you are seeing externally, is a result of the word that is inside of me. Because everything that God did, he did by the word. Let there be, let there be, let there be. Jesus is saying all those things. And remember what the Bible says in John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So the same way Father did everything by Jesus. Jesus is saying uh, all those things are with me. They are with me. Now watch this. But the Father neither knoweth any... Look at it. But the Father... Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whosoever the Son will reveal him. Notice what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, my Father knows me, and he doesn't know anyone else. 
anyone that is to know my father, I have to reveal him. That is why Jesus said it like this. Let, let, let me explain it to you. Why you need Jesus to go to heaven. Look at this. Jesus said, whoever will announce me before people, I will also present him before my father and say, I know him. Hallelujah. He said, if you deny me on that day, you will stand there. My father will say, who's this? You say, I don't know. Who are you? Say, a stranger, throw him out. <laughs> this is why when the sons of Sceva tried to go and cast out some demons, <laughs> they went, they said, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. And you know what the devil said? Demons said this, they say, ah, Jesus we know, Paul we know. Who are you? How did demons know Paul? Because Jesus has announced Paul. Amen. Amen. Let me say it this way. I'm going to do a teaching on this, I believe, on, on, on uh, Revealed very soon. Amen. The difference between legal right to deliverance and the overriding right of deliverance. There are people in order to deliver you. They have to take you through a process and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. They will tell you, listen, uh, um, renounce this, repent of this, do this and do this. When you confess it, they say, hey, then you get delivered. And then there are other people with a different kind of network. They'll just come and say, every demon that is in... Yeah. Amen. <laughs> they override everything. Demons start dancing the whole and shake immediately. Ah, 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 please stop, stop. Not, no, no. Why? Why didn't he make them repent? Why didn't he have to do all those? How did he have just the right to grab the devil by the throat and say, you? Listen to me. A demon you have not manifested, you cannot cast out. And just because a demon manifests does not mean you can cast it out. But definitely, if you cannot manifest a demon, you can cast it out. But if you manifest a demon, it doesn't mean you can cast it out. Hmm. I receive that. Ha. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Prophesy to you. I prophesy, I prophesy to you that every demonic network over your life, that every demonic network over your life has been disconnected. Has been been disconnected. disconnected. No witches and wizards will have access to you. No, no witches and wizards will have access to you. And whoever will try to get access to you, and whoever, whoever will try to get access to you, they will go mental. They will go, go mental. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. It's okay, sit for two seconds. Sit for two seconds. Woman of God, do you understand what I'm saying? Let me tell you how I understand. I understand to the point where if you spoke in tongue and I spoke in tongue, we spoke the same language. Oh, I, I receive it. That's deep. <laughs> capture this, capture this children of God. Capture this children of God. Understand this. The spirit of God wants to speak to you. But you need to understand that you need spiritual introduction. There are people who are walking on the earth that demons already have a memo about you. They know if you show up, they say, ah, guys, if we don't live here, this guy is going to catch us. They will send us to hell and we will never return. Amen. May the Lord Jesus announce you. Amen. I will see that wherever you be, scorpions and serpents yes. will be under your feet. 
in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let, let me finish the word. We have about 29 minutes. Let's, let's, let's get it. Now look at this. Ah, 29. Wow. <laughs> Verse 28. Come unto me. Now listen to what Jesus is saying. He's saying, all these things have been given unto me, and I reveal the Father to whoever I want. Jesus is saying, you don't get access to that network unless I give it to you. And remember, Jesus began by saying, Father, I thank you that you hid this secret from those who think they are wise. Then he goes on to say, what you really want is for me to introduce you. But the only way I will introduce you is if you do this. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Verse 29. Take my yoke and learn of me. Take my yoke and learn of me. Your problem is this. The reason why you have no network that is God is transmitting to you but you can't receive anything. Is because you have been burdened with things that are preventing you from receiving from God. Hold on. It goes a little deeper than that. Jesus said, before we start talking about network, first of all, give me what burdens you so I can give you rest. Listen to me. Unless you receive rest from God, you are not prepared to hear from God. Amen. Amen. Let me find somebody that will hear this message. It's good. Unless you receive rest from God, not peace, rest. Rest from God, you are not ready to hear from God. Rest is assurance. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew this. If you heard something else, it's your fault. They knew this. That even though you throw us into the fiery furnace, our God's network can enter in. They knew even in the fire. Yes. My God can give me rest in yes. the fire. Daniel knew. Even if you throw me in the lion's den, you may have not known that my God is the father of all lions. Hallelujah. He is the lion of the tribe. Hallelujah. Even amongst lions, I am home. Yes. Rest is assurance that I know, that I know, that I know, that I know. It is all working for I prophesy to somebody Hallelujah. who understands everything is working for. I receive. I receive. Ah, sit, sit, sit for, for, for two seconds. Rest. Rest is the key. It is the beginning of the process. You see, when God came to Abraham, walked into Abraham's house, Abraham cooked pepper soup for God. God sat down, finger licking good. Said, let me tell you, Abraham, this is why I came. So that by this time next year, God is sending a message directly. Remember, God already talk, spoke to Abraham. Abraham knew the baby is coming. But now there was a message with a confirmation of delivery. Yeah. On a certain date, UPS of heaven will knock at your door. 
between 9 a.m. Yeah. and 1 p.m. Yeah. There will be a delivery. Yes. Come on. Hallelujah. There will be a what? Delivery. delivery. So Sarah is hearing this. She begins to laugh. Ha <laughs> You know, if she was African, she would do hey with a snap. Auntie Benz is a professional. Show us how they do it. Show us. Show us that you have. Uh -huh. If an African woman does that, you're in trouble. It means like this one is not going to work. One more time, one more time. Just. <laughs> you can snap better than that. Let's go. <laughs> when you hear that, it's just they laugh. <laughs> it's a sarcastic laugh with the click. You're in trouble. So Sarah is in the kitchen laughing. Hey, 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 hey. Whoo, okay. Ah. Uh. God said, Sarah, why are you laughing? But before God said that, Sarah began to say, my husband is an old man. Lord, you know this man can't, you know what I'm saying? You know, Red Bull is not invented, all this. You know, I don't know how Abraham is going to... I don't know. Abraham is like... And I'm also like a little bit, you know, I'm past that time. So, <laughs> hey, hey, God, you're funny. God was like, uh, I'm not joking. What, what? Why is this funny? Why? Is because even though Sarah was at peace, she was not at rest. Let, let me talk to my son who is dressed so beautifully. Sarah was at peace, but she was not at rest. She was at peace with, I will never have a child. Uh, my, my husband can't do it. I'm cool with that. I've accepted that. I'm at peace with that. But she was not at rest. She had no assurance that if God speaks well, God can do what he can do. This is not about me. It is about God. She was at peace, but not at rest. So immediately, even though the message was transmitted, she ignored it because she did not believe in her capacity to produce what God had spoken, not knowing that Jesus wanted her to give that burden of impossibility to him because God specializes in the impossible. Amen. Amen. Some of you heard the prophetic word. Yes. Some of you received the prophetic word. Yeah. But it could not remain in you. And you in it because you are at peace, not at rest. How do you know you are at peace and not at rest? Lord, I'm okay. I don't need anything. I just need you. Even that, that be true. But don't do it at the expense of your suffering. That means you are a hypocrite. Because there's a reason why you go to work. You are not born to clock in, clock out, clock in, clock out. No. When was you? You can't even remember. Some of you can't even remember the last time you went to buy something nice for yourself. You can't remember the last time you could just take your family and go on vacation. There are things that refuel you, but your boss is on vacation all the time. Right. 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 Teaching good. But you, you know what? I'm going to heaven, so I'm fine. No. If you are truly at rest, you would have been okay. Not complaining. Somebody who is rested 
doesn't complain. Okay, you know when we are about to, to lay somebody's body, we say laying them to rest. Notice there is no corpse that ever complained. <laughs> don't embalm me. Don't, don't, don't lower me into the ground. No! <laughs> because they are at rest, they, 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 none of that means anything. Uh, we are in the presence of God. They are not worried. They know one day they will be resurrected. But somebody who's gone to hell, uh, they have no rest. You see, the reason why demons are the way they are, Jesus said it clearly. He said that devils have no what? Rest. They are at peace with knowing that they are going to the lake of fire. But they have no rest because, the, you know, they... they they can't do anything about avoiding the lake of fire. Can I tell you something interesting? Sit, sit, sit for two seconds. Sit for two seconds. I'm going to tell you something shocking. Do you realize that Satan is not even the most powerful spirit? We're not talking about God. Of angels that fell. Do you understand that? Some of you don't even know that. You know, there were other guys that left heaven after Lucifer. In Genesis chapter 6, you hear about them. Then Jesus speaks about them. He said, and for those angels that left their place, they are bound in everlasting chains. In the bottomless pit. And that portal is like in the Euphrates River. Bound. This one's God said, you, I can't even let you roam on the earth. The one that is worrying you is a musician. <laughs> he seems powerful because the gift of music has a lot of influence. You missed it. You didn't get it, but it's okay. Now, now listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. One day I'll teach you about this. Ah, it will shock you. There are 127 on the, of them bound. Locked up with chains. Nah. <laughs> Capture this. Unless you are at rest you are not ready for what will make you hear God. Verse 29. Take my yoke upon you. A yoke is a burden. A yoke is what? A I can't hear you. A burden. A yoke is a burden. Take a burden. Take my burden upon you. The reason why you don't hear from God is not that God is not speaking to you. You have no capacity to carry his burden. You see, you are burdened by your bills. You are burdened by your children. You are burdened by what you want. But if you give Jesus your burdens, I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children beg for bread. God will solve all your problems Amen. so that you can solve his in the land of men. Amen. That's good. Amen. Hallelujah. Sit, sit for two seconds. We are going somewhere. Listen to what the Bible says. It says, how will, I, how will they believe if there is no one who will what? Preach to them. God stands and says, whom shall I send? Because God is spirit. He's been talking to human beings and they can't hear him. Amen. 
And if they do respond, they want to respond in the way they want. So when God has come to you, he wants to lift burdens from you. Because once he takes your burden from you, he will give you rest. And when you are at rest now, when he gives you things to do for him, you will not doubt that he can do it, number one, because you know what he has done for you. Amen. Moses believed God can bring them from bondage. But the ones who are delivered did not believe it because they never gave God their burdens. They just wanted peace. As long as Pharaoh is not whipping me, I'm good. As long as there is no one who will tell me what to do, I'm good. Some of them even settled in the wilderness and the Bible says they all perished. Look at this. Let me give you this quickly. Let me give you this quickly. Hmm. Are you here? Yes. Matthew 22. From verse 11. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. Let me explain something to you. There are people who have the grace that when they call on God, God responds. And there are people who don't. But you can be trained into getting into that place. It's a real place. This is why a man of God can pray for you, you get healed, but you have the same Jesus at home praying and it doesn't happen. It's the strength of your network. Can your hotspot download big files? Mm, amen. That's good. All good. <laughs> Some people are not listening. You know you all use smartphones now. Can your cell service down, 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 download big files? Somebody else is able to download big files and give it to you. Is this making sense so far? Let, let's go deep. And when the king came in to, to, to see the guest, he saw there a man which had no a wedding garment. Verse 12. And he said unto him, Friend, how comest thou hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Verse 13. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. Notice what the Lord is saying. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, verse 14. For many are what? Called, but few are chosen. How do you know you are chosen? Is that you present yourself the way he wants you to, not the way you want. Amen. When he sent an invitation... He said, there is a wedding. You are going to dress in black and white. Yeah. This man showed up in green. He said, uh, my friend, you did invite, you did get the invitation, but why are you here like this? Why, uh, why, why are you here like this? Because, uh, you know, uh, throw him out. God who is love said, throw him out. The biggest mistake a lot of believers make, you come to God the way you want, not the way he wants. Amen. So good. 
When the burden of God falls on you, what is God directing you to do? When I was in Atlanta, uh, for my big brother Jamal Brandt, I, I, I said something. And, and listen to me, children of God. You know, we, we need to mature up. Touch your neighbor, say be mature. Be mature. I can't hear you. Be mature. Your expectations of, of the church are a little bit strange. They are so far away from the truth. Let me ask you a question. How many people have siblings here? Like you have siblings you talk to all the time. Okay, let me use you, uh, woman of God. Stand up, please. Do you all love each other? Your brothers and sisters? Ah, this is deep. No, no, be honest. No, okay, thank you. Do you love, just answer my question. Do you love each other? Yes. Do you like each other all the time? No. Do you agree all the time? No. Are they still your family? Yes. Are they still your brothers and sisters? Yes. So why is it that you want every man of God to agree with you for you to be brothers and sisters in Christ? Come on. Amen. Teaching good. You love your brothers and sisters and you don't even agree with them. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't see eye to eye. You go to church, they'll be like, man, you going to pray again? Psh. But tomorrow they'll be in a fight and you'll be the first one to defend them. Right. And to fight for them. Why? Because they're your family. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. Family is by blood. Yes. Not by, uh, uh, what is it called? Not because we agree. Whether we like it or not, we are relatives by fire, by force. We have the same blood. Any man or woman, hear me and let this stay in the back of your head as in Africa we say, meaning keep it to memory, store it to memory. Every man and every woman that recognizes that Jesus is the son of the living God who is also God that came into Mary the Virgin and was conceived died, rose on the third day, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and is the only way to salvation. Whether you agree with them on other doctrines, it doesn't matter. When you get to heaven, you will see them. Amen. Because the same blood that redeemed you is the same one that is redeeming them. Why do we have these things that you have to believe the way I be? No, I don't. Some people have it completely wrong, but they have the more important part right. Because the Bible says that these scriptures were given for salvation. The purpose of salvation, edification. You, don't tell me the day you received Jesus, you, are master, you had a master's in theology. That when you, you receive Jesus, you are just like, mm, shanda, ba, ba, ba. You see, even Muslims use this to attack Christians. I'm sorry to say this, but it's true. Because you think that if you receive the Holy Spirit, you know about God. No, that's not true. He will teach you. It means you're still a student. Amen. Not that you know. Amen. You will know. You shall know the truth. It is progressive. So you see Christians fighting about nonsense. You see, I, I was, I'm sorry I'm diverting a little bit, but please understand me for a second. I was, I was, I was on, on, on TikTok looking at videos, and all of a sudden this woman popped up. She was like, I, I, I'm about to tell you the truth, and if you don't want to be responsible for the truth, scroll. If you want the truth and you watch this, you'll be accountable. I said, Jesus, this must be a deep revelation. I said, wow. Okay, let's hear it. No, listen, I'm always excited to hear from God because I don't know everything. Sometimes even my, my, my sons and daughters will be like, Papa, how did you know that? Papa, how did you know this? How, how did you know that? How do you know this? And this, I said, uh, 
I know some things. I don't know everything. Only Jesus knows everything. I, don't, I can't know everything. You know, only, only the Lord knows everything. So I'm, I'm, I'm there watching this woman. She started saying, uh, if you celebrate any of these holidays and this, I said, oh, here we go. <laughs> Quoting scriptures and scriptures out of context because they think, oh, if you celebrate Christmas, if you celebrate this. If, listen, let me tell you something. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. Listen to me. We have Judeo-Christian beliefs because our heritage is from Judaism. But God didn't call us to be Jews. Listen, a few uh, days ago, they celebrated New Year, the year 50, uh, 5,000 something. Yeah, 57, 83. Yeah, you know? That's what they were celebrating. It was Happy New Year to them. If you go to India, they have their own New Year. You go to the Chinese, they have their own calendar. Now, does it mean that if I did not... Now, you imagine somebody that... Some of the God's greatest generals, the most powerful men that God ever used on the earth, did not even know that Jews have their own New Year. So are they seen as because they celebrated Christmas? Do you know what the, even the word Christmas means? The mass of the celebration of Christ. How can you be against the celebration? Common sense. It is the one day on earth that everyone, even people that don't like our God, that day they will celebrate it and say, Celebration of Jesus. Amen. Celebration of Jesus. Amen. Celebra Amen. And you're against that. What is wrong with you? Think. It makes zero sense. Now, do you understand what I'm saying? But we have become so, you see, the Bible says this, in their pursuit of knowledge, they became foolish. When you start pursuing things because you just want to be clever, you will end up in bondage. Imagine Paul. Paul who was the, 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 the scholar of scholars. He stood and said, listen, I consider to know nothing except Christ crucified. He didn't spend time saying, don't celebrate this, don't say, what? He went as far as to say, listen, if you go to the king and they give you wine, drink it. Is it not in scripture? He said, if they present it to you, don't reject it, take it. He said to the Romans... I was a Roman. To the Jew, I was, if I was with the Ronitz family, even me, I would be singing, you know. I'll be shouting shalom, shalom, big time. Because I'm with Jews, I have to be with, like them. But if I'm with the Gentiles, I'll be like the Gentiles. Not that I will adapt uh, 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 what they are doing. No. That is, don't you see these are the same doctrines that other sects that are not, anyone that calls Jesus Something else other than what he is, that is God, is a cult. 100%. Have you ever seen a, a, a witness of Jehovah? I'm saying it like that so that they don't burn us. <laughs> you know, you have to use wisdom. Have you ever seen them celebrating anything? They actually ban all celebrations. You are at, notice you are on the same place with these people. And you claim that you'll... It doesn't make any kind of sense. We are pursuing things that are minute to God. Listen to, what, listen to what Jesus said. He said, you have observed the customs of your father and neglected the ways of God. Your father said when you get home, you have to wash your hands, wash your pots a certain way. But you have done this so much that you have forgotten what matters to God. You really think God has a problem with somebody sitting down saying, wow, joy to the world. You go everywhere, everybody singing, yes, silent night. Those are some of the most deepest worship songs ever. You have a problem with that. <laughs> to me, may, and, and I'm sorry to say this, people that like these things have no power. They don't. I'm sorry to say it. Anyone that is bound in the traditions of men cannot receive power from God. Amen. 
If you don't clap, I may be talking about you. Anyone bound in the traditions of men cannot have power from God. Amen. I'm sorry. I'm just keeping it 100% as I can. But all this is because we have lost God's network. Do you know what they said about Jesus? Jesus was hanging out with different people. Sitting with them while they are celebrating. He was among them. And they demonized him. How could he be a man of God and do that? How is he eating with them? How is he celebrating with them? How is he going to this wedding? How is he going to that? How would he let that kind of person touch him if he was a prophet? Listen, if Jesus did something, I want to do that thing. Amen. 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 You're helping us. I love Moses. I love Abraham. I love all the prophets of God. But I was not called to follow Moses. Amen, amen. I was not called to follow Abraham. They came to testify about the word. Yeah. We need to stop this. We need to be mature. Amen. We need to grow up. It's crazy to me. Some of you even, you're robbing your children of, of, of celebrations that kids, for them to be kids, to enjoy life. They can't even enjoy it because you are hurting children. It's true. Your kids are growing up miserable because you have denied them the simple pleasures of being a child. Oh, we don't even celebrate anything. You are living in fear, yet you are free. The Bible says, I have not made anything unlawful to you. Do everything with thanksgiving. You are here for... What? Hallelujah. It's sad. It's sad. We are not saying we want our kids to be like every kid. We want our kids to be the way God wants them to be. That's what we want. And we know part of it is children have to be what? Children. Don't turn them into a bishop when they are still. <laughs> but all this is because we have lost what? Network. We have lost the network. Zero network. We can't even look. You see, this is the thing. Eh? This, this is the thing. Do you realize that there was certain materials that they could wear and there are things that they could not wear? There is a certain material you are permitted to wear and there are certain you are not. Why aren't they wearing the things that were permitted? You are wearing all kinds of outfits. Keep that one too. Keep that one. If you want to go even further, oh, anyone that has marking on their body, okay, you skipped a few verses before. He said, don't get a lineup. He says, any man that cuts his sides, trims his beard. That's, that's in the same passage. In Deuteronomy, he talks about that. But you see your pastor busy saying, every man should have a nice haircut. But a person that maybe they got their rose on their body, which will return to dust. You will demonize them and maybe God will use them better than you with your... Amen. Amen. Teach is so good. This is hypocrisy. Yeah. This is big time hypocrisy. Big time. They will trim their beard, but they will say, you shall not mark your body. Okay, it says don't cut your hair. But then they will tell you, well, eh, 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 the Bible says a man with long hair, it is a shame unto him. Then Sam, uh, Samuel must have been shameful. Samson must have been shameful. Jesus must have been shameful. All these people, they say, even Paul said, okay, what did Paul say? If you look into nature, doesn't nature even tell you that it is wrong for a man to have long hair? Okay, let's look at nature and look at the animal that God likens himself to. God likens himself to a lion. He is a male that has big hair. Yeah. Amen. So are they reading that verse correctly? Or are they choosing what they want? Was Paul saying what they think they are saying? Or did they fabricate to what they wanted? Jesus is saying, I'm the lion of the tribe of Judah. Have you ever seen all female lions have no hair? The male lion, ah, her locks. But they are saying, if you look into nature... 
oftentimes even if you look at the even if you look at the like a uh, uh, kingdom of like even birds and stuff the m- male ones seem to have the biggest feathers they are more they are more majestic for some reason so is was paul saying what they think or they chose what they chose they don't understand that every nazarene was under a covenant every one of them so is god choosing or what is happening we need to stop these things it's nonsense amen 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 when adam was in the garden adam did not have a, a shaver we need to stop these things it's nonsense let us love god the way god wants to be loved amen let us chase after god god is seeking those who will seek him amen. those who will worship him in spirit and in truth yes. not in carnality amen. god doesn't amen. care what you have on your body that's not gonna give you salvation god doesn't care about your health Is that did he say okay for you to enter heaven you know people always make me laugh they say um you need to dress like a man of god okay what does that look like do you mean give me your reasons okay you know traditionally some dress like this especially in our time if you look at elijah <laughs> people will look at mama t and say oh, she has big gucci belt uh, elijah had the biggest leather belt nobody dressed like elijah right. with camel skin yeah he, he never dressed like he was just himself did god use him yes in fact he was taken alive you can say you know what learn how, dress according to where you are just like you can't come to church in a bikini that's for the beach at the beach nobody will say how dare you dress do you understand what i'm saying you have to dress according to where you are that is logical that makes sense that is honorable when you go to court you usually will wear a suit and a tie why because it is appropriate not that if you wear jeans and t-shirts you will not win a case it just shows you to be a responsible person you understand where you are so when you come to church also you dress like you know i am going before god there are some people who will have that they are not yet that message has not yet downloaded so it's not bad they will learn we are not here to be fashion police how dare thee you make people fall no people will fall even if you're covered you can't see. you're just seeing the eyes and somebody that has the spirit of lust will still last their imagination will start to take everything apart amen we need people to be delivered not to protect people so that they hide their lusts inside of them amen that's amen. nonsense amen. let us be spiritual teaching good let's cast demons out of people yes not let us cover up so that their demon doesn't manifest let them be free that they don't even think like that let us be spiritual even when my sons and daughters come and confide with me and say, ah, Papa, I say, listen, these things happen. Let's do better. I won't sit there and say, how you, you must. No. It's part of life. You mess up, you stand up, you clean yourself up, move forward. You're not the first one. You will not be the last one. It's a journey. Once you recover, you can help others to show them, this is how God's heart is. Amen. Let us be spiritual. Let us be spiritual. Let's stop being uh, people of, of, of like, it's like tyranny. Even people are afraid to go to church. Because they are already condemned before they even enter. The Bible says, judge righteously. Do you know what that means? It means give somebody advice according to where they are. Help them. So good. Help them according to where they are. It's a problem. But all this is because network. People who have never given, 
They will tell you, don't give, you don't, you, you don't buy a miracle. Who said you buy a miracle? Nobody has ever said that. No, you can't buy anything from God. But giving is a spiritual language. Let me, let me show you how ridiculous people who, you see, this is the problem of being carnal, making what is spiritual carnal. God appears to Abraham, tells Abraham this. He takes him abroad and he tells him, look at the stars. He says, so shall your descendants be. The Bible says, Abraham believed God and he was counted for him righteousness, right? Abraham asked God, what must I do to establish what you have said? God told him, find this, find this and give it before me. Why is God asking Abraham to give a sacrifice so that what God said to be established? God is the one who spoke to him, who said, I will do this unto you. And he said, okay. I hear you, Lord. What must I do? God told him, find this, find this, and give me a burnt offering like this. God who spoke, who is going to do it, is telling him to do something. Abraham is about to be the father of nations. God puts another sacrifice before him. He says, Abraham, give me your only son. He says, what? I've been praying for years for this. You promised me this. I had let this thing go. You br- Give me your son. Yes. Abraham took his son. He even put him on the altar. Do you know how much painful it is to slay your own child? In his heart, he had already sacrificed his son. He took the knife and set it like this. Then God called from heaven. He said, Abraham, now I know that you love me. There is something on the side, a ram stuck on the bush. Grab it and offer him unto me. Notice the interesting thing. You give as a sign of love. Saying, God, I trust you. That what you're saying, you're not buying anything. But people who don't understand the principle of giving... They will make videos of you saying, look, they were asking people for money. You don't even understand. Like, listen, if you knew some of us what we have given, what we continue to give, you will never speak again in your life. Amen. We don't teach principles we don't practice. There is no man or woman in the scriptures that received something from God without a sign. Do you think you receive salvation for free? God gave himself a seed. God gave himself. In order for God to release salvation, God gave himself. He took his own son, sent him on earth, took his own son to be killed. So that he can be appeased. So that he can forgive you and me. God needed a sacrifice. He gave himself a sacrifice. He gave himself. Then people will come and tell you freely you have received. Freely give. You don't understand what scripture is talking about. The freely received is salvation. But it was not free. He said you you received it for free. Somebody had to pay for it. Amen. Amen. That's good. For you. Free. Yes. But Jesus, it cost him. Amen. These gospels that we read, I'm sorry, let me use your Bible. This Bible we use today, it came at the cost of people's blood. People were killed. So that me and you can sit down and read Matthew chapter 15 and argue over nonsense. Somebody died so that you receive Jesus. You, you're busy arguing about doctrines that will not take you to heaven. Amen. It's crazy. God's name is Yahuwah. God's name. Shut up. Every tongue will confess. Yes. Yes. Every tongue means every language will confess Jesus to be Lord. Ah, stop. Yeah, his name is Yahshua. We agree. But guess what? You don't call God in the physical anyway. It is your spirit. It is your spirit that calls on God, not your words. That's why you say, in the name of Jesus, no demon is coming out. In the name of Jesus, nobody is getting healed. In the name of Jesus, but you love this Bible that you don't even read properly. God is seeking those who will worship him in spirit. Yes. Your worship is not even physical. 
Your worship is in spirit. Come on. Nothing about you giving God anything is physical. It is in spirit. If you give God what you love the most, you are giving him from your spirit because your spirit has not kept anything from him. So if you come before God and you want to pour some, you know that you love it, but you let it go. God looks and says, this one loves me. We need to stop this nonsense. All this is because our hot spot is down. So we are looking for ways to justify our spirituality. We are looking for a way. We want to satisfy what we want. You will notice such people love the law that they can't keep. But they love it because they love being in bondage. We need to stop this. Jesus said, cast your burdens and receive my yoke, not yours. Even the apostles stood. They saw the Holy Spirit falling on people who are not circumcised. They said, wow, surely now there is no difference. They were like, dang, I shouldn't have. I suffered for no reason. The Holy Spirit is coming. Some of you didn't get the joke, it's deep. Mama said, be It's true. They are like, ah. Notice the same language David used to insult Goliath. In the New Testament, if David was around, he would have swallowed his words. Mm -hmm. He stood before God and said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Notice he used circumcision to be a way to show that they are people of the promise. Then the New Testament comes. Then Paul realized, he says, ah, the whole time God was seeking the circumcision of the heart. So good. If you're willing to, down there, it means in your heart. <laughs> the greatest teacher stand, prophet. Stand up. The greatest teacher. Rise up, we are going to pray. Listen to me. Me, I just say it the way it is. Amen. If you love it, you love it. If you don't, we pray for you. Amen. It is what it is. They swallowed their words. Peter, all his life, he was not eating certain things. Then one day, you know, God appears. He tells him, kill and eat. He said, I can't eat what is unclean. God said, hey, don't call what I've made clean and clean. So Peter said, when did you make this? clean he never heard what jesus said it is not what goes into man but it's what comes out of man that makes man to sin they never heard that jesus was saying it they never heard it all of this is because we have held on to human networks we have even held on satan's own network and all these people can't receive or hear from God. But you and me, you and me, the finger of the king is upon us. Amen. Amen. We don't only have the word of God, we have the spirit of God. The spirit of God is within us. All the Lord is asking you and is asking me today is very simple. Give me your burdens so I can give you my yoke so you can hear me. When you are driven by God's burden, you begin to hear God. Because your ambitions, your desires become different. All of a sudden you will be asleep. You think of your aunt that you haven't spoken to for a while. And immediately you know God wants you to pray for them. You get up and you say, Father, wherever my auntie is, touch... Notice now there is something else guiding, mm -hmm. pushing you to do something for God. Now you imagine somebody who can carry God's burdens. Don't you think you will hear his voice? Because now what drives you is no longer the bills because he's taking care of it. Amen. 
is no longer your children because he's taking care of Amen. when that shift truly happens when that shift truly comes we are elevated from glory to glory to glory today i want you to understand this the king has been talking to you but you have not had the capacity to receive sometimes even when i'm prophesying to people it's hard for me to say certain things because I know that where their heart is, they will not be able. I will still say it, but it will take spiritual wisdom for them to capture it. And you think, and when you sit back down and you listen to, you remember what was said, you'll be like, ah, he did say it. But you see, the issue is when we carry so much of what we want. When God even wants to give us a key that will open and unlock our life, we won't hear it. Because we have already determined the terms in which he must speak. One of the most amazing things about God is this. He would do something Many times you will not understand it. But the outcome is always the same. It always works for our good. We may cry for a week. We may cry for a year. But we will rejoice for eternity. Amen. Amen. I feel like I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to you, Mama. Amen. Amen. Listen to me. Law says, when our loved ones go, it's not a loss. It's a gain. Jesus said, it is good for me to go. Don't you know that now you have people in God's presence, 24 hours pleading your case before God. Amen. Oh, don't be afraid, Mama. You see, the power of God is not a noise. Is not in screaming. Is not in shouting. It's in calmness. It's calm. Come, Mama, let me help you. Come to me. Hold my hand. Is this? That was your mom? Really? Wow. Hallelujah. Wow, that was your mom? Yeah. Okay, move close. Let me, can you pull that close to her? Okay. I, I, wa I want. You, you prayed for me three mm. weeks ago. Uh huh. And now when I'm home, I can take the oxygen off. Wow. It's a big victory, Pastor. It's a big victory. Yeah. I want it to even be more. I'm going to be bolder and try to do it more. But at home now, I can take it off and I don't, my oxygen levels don't drop. Look at me, Mama. Look at me. If your mother is able to be 90 strong, that same grace is within you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, let infirmity left leave you. May you receive what is already inside of you. May it manifest in the name of Jesus. Yes. Long life and longevity. Yes. We strengthen your lungs and your body's capacity yes. to carry oxygen. May you come back with a major and mega testimony. Hallelujah. Our God is able. Yes. Can you hear me? Lift your hands to him. Lift your hands to him. And I want you to pray that God will restore you in the place that you can receive his rest so that he may give you his burden. Lift up your voice and cry to the Lord. Father.
Father, restore me back into the place of rest. Restore us back into the place of rest so that we may receive your burden, Father. We give you all of our burdens. Lift your voices and pray. Lift your voices and pray. Give your burdens to him. Give your burdens to him and receive rest. Hallelujah. Receive rest. Father, we give you our burden so that we may receive your burden today. In the name of Jesus. Que pradis donari ma antes. Lipa curva nuste benicre divaros. Lepa ricadus da banambri ikinasto. Vigari basunde le nicre divas. We rest today, O oh God. We rest today, O oh God. We receive your burden today, Father. And we release, we release every burden on our shoulders today, O oh Father. We rest in you today, God. We rest in you today, God. We are no longer at peace, but we are at rest today. E pradivarus de le mikia. Sudan de le ni praduvanus de le kis. Bedaru vanukre divanate le kisos. Zi araba kuni ele. Zi kede urabaka. Bangande zi abaku se pray, 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 pray. Keep praying. I can't hear you praying. Lift up your voice and pray. Le mande le nicro divanastos, akriva nape, akiva rabanasto kiva edes, lupe kariba nape iva rustava. Lift up your voice and pray. This is one of the most important prayers you can pray. We receive your We receive your burden today, God. Zena li kiva rustova nicre divanato. Speak to him, speak to the Lord. Lift up your voice, speak to God. Speak to the Lord. Father, we give you every burden. We give you every, every burden, burden today. And we receive your burden, Father. We receive your burden. We receive your rest. Eriva rusto velikre diva nisto. Ishkata sabro kusirede. Continue to pray. Continue to pray. This is your moment. Continue to pray. Ziarabo kusi aragadia. Bagar debe kishi arakotia. Zabra gandi elebe kesia. Zondi i amakase, kadosh, 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 zi araba, zi oroku si arakap, zi brande kelebe ke si araba, pray, 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 zabru dune ene ikiano, zi araba kriska zi araga. Overflow, Lift your voices, overflow, Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 
Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I understand today. I understand today that you are ready to elevate me. That you are ready to elevate me. You are ready to transform me. You are ready to transform me. You are ready to take me to another level. You are ready to take me to another level. But I have hindered myself. But I have hindered myself by trying to offload my own burdens. By trying to offload my own burdens. By trying to solve my own burdens. By trying to solve my own burdens. But today I understand. But today I understand. You are the only one who can do it you are the only one who can do it you are the only one who can help me you are the only one who can help me your yoke is lighter your yoke is lighter today oh lord today oh lord i stretch myself towards you i stretch myself towards you and i pray oh lord and i pray oh lord rescue me from the burdens i have rescue me from the burdens i have restore me today restore me today into the place of rest into the place of rest in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus thank you father for doing it for me thank you father for doing it for me in Jesus name lift up your voice and begin to pray thank you father for restoring us today thank you oh Lord thank you for restoring us to the thank you rest thank you for removing every burden from me thank you Lord thank you for placing your yoke on me yes Lord for placing your burden on me. Yes, Lord. We thank you for rest today, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you for ease today, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Lift your hands to him. Lift your hands to him. Your burdens are about to be lifted. Amen. 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 The burdens are about to be lifted from you. Lift both your hands Amen. to him. Look to him. Look to Jesus. Father, lift their burdens now. Whether it's a burden of sickness, whether they desire open doors, breakthrough, deliverance, my Father, give it to them. Even those who are watching from home, King of kings, give it to them. Father, unlock them for your glory. Lift them for your glory. Reveal yourself to them for your glory. Touch them for your glory. Let that doctor's report be reversed. Whatever it is that has kept them from what you have ordained for them, let it be reversed in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Addictions be reversed. Addictions to be reversed. Chains of bondage to be broken. For us and our families in the name of Jesus. Father, today let there be a restoration of our connection to you. In a profound and mighty way. All this for your glory, Father. Father, I thank you that each and every one of them will return with testimony upon testimony upon testimony upon testimony upon testimony. Amen. And that their joy, their joy will be full. Father, make their joy full. Lord, make their joy full. King of kings, make their joy full. Make their joy overflow. You said until now, you have not asked me of anything. Ask that your joy may be full. We ask, O Father, that our joy will be full. Whatever is missing in our lives, we bring it before you, Lord. May our joy be full. Lift up your hands and ask God for what will make your joy overflow. Lift up your voice and cry to him. Speak to him, he's listening to you. Open your mouth, speak to him, he's listening to you. I can't hear you praying, lift up your voice. Elobo, keria masota. 
Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Just silence the music for a second. Just lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. Father, let whatever is blocking their prayer today be removed from them. If they be an evil spirit stopping what you have ordained for them, let it depart from them now. Every evil power, every demonic force, I command it to leave your people now. Yes. Everyone that can hear my voice, let the curse of death, the curse of sickness, the curse of death, the curse of sickness, infirmities, yes. leave these people now. Leave these people now. Unclean spirits, demonic spirits, devils. Leave these people now. You will not kill them. You cannot hold them. You can do nothing to them. In the name of Jesus, depart from these people now. Yes. As the church of the living God commands you to. And never return in their lives. You have no right to take anything from them. You will not steal their joy. You will not take their families. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that they are secure. Father, I thank you as this new month begins. That they will sing songs of victory. Yes, God. Hallelujah. That they will sing songs of praise. Yes. Hallelujah. That you will give them a new song. Let them sing of your wonders in this new month. Let them sing of your praises in this new month. For your mighty works that will be seen in their lives. The victories they will receive. The healing they will receive. The breakthroughs that they have received. Let this be the month of unexpected miracles. Yes, man. See. Hallelujah. Let this be the month of unexpected miracles. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. For your faithfulness. For your goodness. I thank you that it is so. Give them the communion. We haven't done communion yet. Let's grab our communion quickly. Man of God, I will see you right after service. I told you, but you didn't hear me. <laughs> but God is good. Amen. Are you listening to me? God is good. After this one, two will come. Do you remember now? God is faithful. Grab your communion, please. The ways of God are mysterious, but they are good.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift up your bread. Father, as we partake of your body, or ev not everyone has it yet, now let's give people time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You came from Australia to see me? Don't worry, after we do communion, I'll, I'll help you. Hey, we came through a hurricane to be here. God is faithful. Amen. Amen. God is faithful. Amen. How many people travel from out of town? Hey. Hey, Hallelujah. Father. Wow. Okay, after this, you'll come to the front. I will touch you and bless you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Lift up, lift up your bread. As you partake this, you are joining yourself into the body of the Lord Jesus. Because there was no sickness in Jesus, there will be no sickness in you. Amen. Amen. Because the Lord Jesus had no limitation, he could walk on water physically. You shall walk through impossible situations Amen. and overcome. Amen. Because nobody could take the life of the Lord Jesus, no one will take your life. Amen. No one will take the life of your family. Amen. Amen. David said, as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Jesus went through death and came out. Whatever death situation you're in, after you partake of this, Amen. resurrection is coming to you. Amen. I said resurrection is coming to you. Amen. Receive. Resurrection is coming to you. I Amen. Receive. Resurrection is coming to you. I receive. I receive. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, partake of it. Grab the cup if you can. Grab the cup. The blood of Jesus removed sin, condemnation in our lives. And because of his blood, we are presented blameless before God. As you partake of this, understand that your old ways are dead. Amen. What you did one hour ago, two hours ago, five minutes ago, after the blood of Jesus. Amen. You are released from your past. Amen. Those who are in Christ, there's no condemnation. You are not condemned in the sight of God. The Bible says life is in the blood. As you partake of this, there will be life in every single thing that has to do with you. Amen. See. Life in your body. And see. Life in your children. Amen. See. Life in your business. I receive. See. Life in your career. I receive. Every single thing that has to do with you. Life is going to flow. Receive it. If there was any sickness genetically in your blood today, it is gone in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
if there was any curse pronounced over you and your family by reason of the blood of Jesus it is broken amen I said by reason of the blood of Jesus it is broken amen the Bible says we are grafted into the house of Israel the same blessing that was in Abraham that was also in the Lord Jesus as you partake this you are receiving it I said you are receiving it. I receive it. Multiplication is your portion. I receive it. Everything you lay your hands on shall prosper. I receive it. From today. From today. If there was a tumor in your body, it will dissolve. Amen. Amen. If there was a growth in your body, it would dissolve. Amen. It doesn't matter what they said. It doesn't matter what you know. Even your eyes will see. Hallelujah. Deafness will depart from you. Yes. Arthritis will depart from you. Yes. Indeed you shall live amen amen as you partake of it thank god for the blood of jesus go ahead and partake of it hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. 